Hi Aries, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your angel and spirit guide message for you. Now this reading is undated because I am of the firm belief that whenever you come across this message is the exact time that your angels and your spirit guide wants you to hear it, or wanted you to hear it. Alright, so let's dive right in. I'm going to be starting with your spirit guide animal card. So these are going to be your animal spirit guides, your animal, animal totems for this time. So spirit, angel and spirit guide message. For Aries, angel and spirit guide message 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 for Aries. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. This one right here, the dolphin spirit, which I love. And this one right here, the mouse spirit. Oh, that's a beautiful combination. Okay. And then your chakra cards. Angel and spirit guide message for Aries. 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 Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. This, oh, these two. So we have here communication and love. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so I love that you got love. It means your heart is really shining big during this time. All right, so this is the heart chakra and the throat chakra. Angel and spirit guide message for Aries. 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 Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. All right. And if any of these cards resonate with you, they will all be located in the description box below. So we're starting off with the Emperor Aries, so you're right at the heart. You are crowned with the Ace of Cups, which is a gift of love. So love is really quite powerful during this time. You have the world, and then you have judgment. You have the sun at your root. That's beautiful. The seven of wands. And the queen of swords and air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Then you have the Eight of Swords. Oh, that's very interesting. You have the King of Pentacles, Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And you have the Queen of Cups, a Water Sign Energy, Pisces. No, no, no. Yeah, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. There we go. And I love it because you're definitely taking this gift of love that's coming into your life. And that's beautiful. That's powerful for you. It's what it is. So let's talk about your spirit animals for this time. So if you are seeing during this time dolphins or little mice like it can be pictures it can be stuffed animals it can be you know it can be you know outside you see a mouse scurry by your path and if you live by the water and see a dolphin you know that would be absolutely amazing so it means here that this totem is reminding you about it the animal is reminding you about this message and with the dolphin spirit it says this and that are true so seeing multiple sides of a story and multiple sides of what is truly desired and what people want is going to be something highly beneficial. And you have here the lotus flower, which the dolphin is jumping over. So jumping over wisdom to see that there are more sides to a story or more sides to a situation than maybe we, we see at once. Okay. Or that, you know, know that. Okay. So what spirit is saying is know that this and that are true and that you're going to have to find a middle ground because you're going to be looking at two things and they're going to be really valid points. One side of the camp is going to be where you stand. You're going to be like, okay, this is true. And somebody else is going to come up 
with an idea or something or just a question that makes you go, oh my gosh, that's true too. And finding that middle ground that can really be built off of is going to be highly beneficial to you during this time. And then this leads us to the mouse spirit, which says, tend to the small things. And that's going to be really important for you, Aries, really looking at the small things, looking at the things that maybe other people overlook, paying attention to detail, but not being completely caught up in detail, looking at what you want and knowing that the small things matter. It's also in relationships, the small things matter. Oh, I made a cup of coffee for myself, so I'm making one for you, or cocoa or tea, or whatever it is. You know, just remembering that the small things matter. And yes, the grand gestures, they're lovely, but we're really binds people together, what really brings people together are the small things. And during this time, you're going to see it at home, at work, at, at school, wherever you are, you know, you're going to see that the small things matter. If you're out and you're shopping or, you know, you're at a restaurant, just being polite, that's going to make a huge difference. And you're going to see that the energy around you is astoundingly powerful and astoundingly beautiful because you're remembering the small things that so many people overlook because of the chaos of our world. And then this leads you to communication. Communication is going to be very important to you, right? What is said, but also what isn't said. You know, a way a person, body language can be interpreted or when they're going off on little rants and how they kind of get little digs in and stuff like that, Aries. You're going to sit there and be really sensitive to this during this time. You're also going to have nonverbal conversations or connections. This can very well be with your angels and with your spirits, your spirit guides, but it's also going to be with yourself and with those around you. And you're going to really be picking up on the energy of things. And know here that if it's not what you want and if it's not what you what you like, the tending to the small things, the looking at the little things that can be done to really embrace this glory and this grace is going to be highly important to you, right? So healing and cleansing of your throat chakra is going to be very beneficial. And this is also with the throat chakra, it's, it's listening, it's life purpose, it's truth. It is, you know, a coming together of your soul and embracing your creativity. And a lot of these things you're going to be getting is going to be subconscious. You're going to have those, again, nonverbal communications right, that you're going to pick up on a self, a self, subconscious, there we go, level, or it can just be that the, the words that are spoken during this time have tremendous impact on you, right, or you're really finding yourself, now, be mindful of this, because communications, if you're finding yourself really holding on to people's words, kind of taking them in, and thinking about them too much, it can be that thing where you start to worry, you start to fret, you start to sit there and kind of obsess, and we all do it, I mean, I know I do it, you know, oh my gosh, did this person take offense, and I didn't mean it that way, and I should have chosen this word, and maybe next time, and you go over the conversation again, and you see where you should have stopped it, so just be mindful of that during this time, you might have that type of feeling coming forward, that type of sentiment coming forward, and embrace what you love, you have the heart right here. You have the heart chakra. This is your inner child. This is love in all its forms. It's forgiveness. It's not saying you have to break bread with the person, but forgiveness, entering into joy, you know, play, happiness, laughter, balance. It's going to be so important to you. The happiness, laughing, that is going to be so important to you. Aries, and a healing and a cleansing of your heart chakra, but also knowing the power of your heart chakra, the power of your heart, the way that you're looking at so much and so much is being revealed to you. Now you have here at your heart is you Aries. You have the emperor shining through, which is you in the major arcana, right? You have the tree of life right here. You have the all seeing eye. You have here swords crossed over or daggers crossed over. And there is just a sense of power and defending something great, defending something beautiful. And that's really going to be what you're doing during this time. You're defending what you desire. You're defending what you love. You're defending what you want. And it doesn't mean that this whole time is spent in the defensive. It means that you are looking at yourself and you're being really honest. And you're saying, what is it that I want for my life? Where is it that I want to be? This is the essence of yourself shining forward. And as you do so, you're being open, you're being honest, you're being truthful and you are embracing your power. You're also claiming your throne. I always see the emperor like David in the Old Testament in the Torah where he was profoundly human, okay? But, I mean, he made mistakes. He completely messed up at times, but he was still great. He was still grand, and he still saw his divinity and his connection with divinity. And that's what I'm seeing here with you, Aries, having that connection with divinity. Now, do know, and this isn't to make you guys neurotic or upset or anything like that, 
but every card and every sign, every zodiac sign, has a positive and it has a negative. So with the with the emperor, the negative side of the emperor is being like Nero, playing your fiddle as Rome burns, saying, this is what I want, this is what I'm going to get, and the heck with the rest of you. So here with Aries coming in, it's really looking at what you desire, not with Aries coming in, but with your essence of yourself shining forward and your Aries side being so strong and prevalent during this time. You are going to, to see that at times when you get upset, you can either sit there and tend to the small things, look at what you need and see that there's validity to both sides of the story, even if you don't believe it, and embracing communication and embracing your heart's desire to move forward. And as you do so, there's an empowerment, there's a coming to terms with things. And it's saying, yes, I can still claim my throne, even if I have made mistakes, even if I have messed up. And this brings you to the King of Pentacles. During this time, you're going to be very down to earth. Also, earthly things, astoundingly important. With the King of Pentacles, this is again an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. But this is also a sense of having your feet firmly planted on the ground, okay? Sensuality really coming forward and passion coming forward. There's an inquisitiveness, there's an emotion, there's a sense of more guiding you. And as this comes forward, you're claiming your throne, you're claiming your power, you're looking at what it is that you want and where it is that you desire being. There's also a sense here during this time, yes, I mean, you have two queens and you have the emperor and you have the king. So during this time, you're going to have equal parts of wanting to be center stage, of being seen, especially when it comes to practical matters and when it comes to what your soul wants, you know, how you want to move forward and how you want to be recognized on this earthly plane, what you, what you value highly. It can be, you know, out at work trying to, you know, be seen a certain way. It can be at home, running a house. I mean, raising kids, that's work. That's a 24 hours a hour a day, seven day a week job. So here, never downplay yourself, never downplay yourself at all. And it can be trying to juggle both. And you know, you get hard on yourself, especially when you try to do that, or you get hard on yourself anyway. So here, know that you are going to make mistakes, just like David did in the Torah, in the Old Testament. And did he turn his back on himself? Did he say, I'm just not worthy to be a ruler? I'm just not worthy to have a crown upon my head. I'm just not worthy for this connection. No, he didn't. He claimed his prosperity. And that's what you need to do, Aries, during this time. Claim your prosperity and say, each day I wake up to new richness. Each day I wake up to new possibilities. Each day I can choose to put the crown upon my head, the crown of prosperity, abundance, you know, power. I am ready to walk into that garden of abundance. I am ready to be that powerful person. I am ready to, you know, go after my goals and make them a reality. I am ready to work hard and be satisfied with, with my outcomes. Because as you do so, you have the Ace of Cups crowning you. And this is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of love. Now, with dragonflies, dragonflies always make me think of the spiritual realm. You also have a rose up here. So it can be some message from somebody named Rose in your family, all right? But it can also be a sense of a flower blooming, okay? Coming into new beauty, coming into, and femininity is going to be very important during this time. It doesn't mean that you have to identify as feminine, but the softer things, the prettier things, you know, kind of the quote unquote atypical feminine things are going to be very important to you. They're going to give you a sense of security or they're going to give you a sense of peace. Or this is saying, you know, be a little self-indulgent during this time. Take care of yourself. And you should take care of yourself anyway. But I do know, you know, it's so easy to lose track of you and be everything to everybody else. And then you're on the back burner. Spirit is saying here, and your angels, oh my gosh, your angels most definitely are saying, take yourself and put yourself on the front burner. Burner, Put yourself and know that you are powerful and beautiful and absolutely profound and embrace this gift. Now, the Ace of Cups I also see as a cleanse. You can see it as a detox, getting away of all the negativity, all the impurities within us and moving us forward into blessings and bliss. But it can very well bring up sorrows, pains, heartbreaks, disappointments. You can find that all of a sudden you just get angry at something and you're not sure why because the Ace of Cups is paired with the Eight of Swords. In your mind, there's, there's a sense of being trapped, like stuck in this spider's web. 
And it's like, how do I move forward? How do I get to where it is that I want to be? How do I, you know, go after my goals, my dreams, my power, my truth? How do I embrace what I desire? And so here with the Eight of Swords, do know that during this time, even though you're crowned with tremendous love, tremendous beauty, which at your roots you are most definitely taking, there is this sense of being overwhelmed. There is the sense of needing to get out of your own head. Because what you're going to do during this time and what you'll have the inclination of doing is making things bigger than they actually are and making things more centered around you. This is why the dolphin spirit is saying this and that are true. You know, let everything have its validity, whether it is valid in your life or not, and say, okay, I'm still moving forward. I'm still being empowered. I'm still going after what I desire, what I need. Because the Eight of Swords, I mean, that can just be the game changer for this whole entire time when you stumble across this message from your angels and from spirit, where they're saying, okay, I'm cleansing you. I'm healing you. I'm helping you move forward. Embrace it. And then with the Eight of Swords, it's going to be like, oh, no, I can't. I can't. It's overwhelming. It's overpowering. I can't even breathe. I can't move forward. And then you will miss this sun time because this is a time of having the sunshine on you, of having beauty and love and brilliance and joy come into your life, of being blessed and, and empowered and feeling like what you touch turns to gold. Well, maybe not to gold, but that you can see the deeper truth of things and you can also see the way that things are going to progress. You can kind of see, yeah, that's where this rose Actually, it's not a rose. It's a, it's a, a lotus flower. There we go. I'm like, what is it? It's a lotus flower. So this is wisdom and understanding. But the rose message still stands true because that's what I saw it as most profoundly when I was first reading the card. And so that's what spirit wanted me to say. So here you have the lotus flower. So wisdom, understanding, connecting with the lotus in, in the dolphin spirit as you rise above, as you are empowered. So here you are taking this cup of blessings and of beauty, of love and of peace. And it's, you're being warmed, okay? That's going to be very important to your heart and your, your passion coming together. Also think of these as okay, air, fire, water, and earth right? With the sun, with the sun's rays, with this joy coming around you, with this passion embracing you, there is going to be a sense of you being warmed, of your passions being guided, of the fire being steady, okay? Because if the sun was closer, the planet Earth wouldn't be able to have life on it. If the sun was further away, Earth wouldn't be able to have life on it. It would be too hot. It would be too cold. So here, it's that perfect balance and it's that perfect warmth that is leading you forward to what you love, to what you desire. Again, you have that cup right here. You are absolutely taking this as part of your gift. The wisdom is over you, but also the sense of being guided. Again, the imagery in the Ace of Cups is being just completely reiterated in the Queen of Cups where you have the moon, okay, stepping into wisdom, stepping into divine guidance, right? You have this crown around upon your head, right? Majesty crowning you, the dragonflies, there we go, flying above the stars, so wishes and spirit moving with you, those the spirits of those that you have loved, who have passed, or just your ancestral line looking at you, wanting you to achieve. Wisdom is coming your way, deeper insights, deeper understandings. There is a cleanse that comes that sets you free, that helps empower you, but also here know that there will be people who are jealous and may try emotional manipulation as they see you stepping into the sun, as they see you having beauty and power and grace and understanding around you, where they'll kind of want to take that warmth from you and use it for themselves because they'll think, oh, okay, only one person can be happy at a time. And that's just not true. So here with the seven of wands, there is this sense of feeling as if you will need to defend yourself. And there is also the sense of knowing your power, knowing what you can create within your life, what you can conjure, the wisdom that is moving you forward. And as you believe in your power and your truth, as you believe in your passion and your identity, right, you don't feel the need to have to defend yourself. You take pride in yourself and you say, I'm going to keep on moving forward in my goals. I see where I need help, where I need assistance, where I need to work things out, but I also see how I need to move forward, the passion that is around me, what I do need to stand up against, but also when standing up against people is just a drain of your energy. You're never going to get those people on your side. They'll never understand. And those people will become quite clear because you have your angels right here with the, with the judgment card right here blessing you, walking with you, moving with you, understanding you. 
okay? And they're going to help you stand tall and stand firm. Now, I would be a little wary during this time of you have a beautiful connection with a a water sign energy, but there can also be, again, be emotional manipulation, and there can also be a sense during this time of being really involved and really committed to seeing results in things, which could take up all your time. And you could be like, wow, if I just keep on pushing, and you'll push yourself to the place of exhaustion. So here with the judgment, know that you have the phoenix rising here. You're looking at the time. You're looking at what you want. You're looking at what's truly important to you, and your angels are going to be whispering in your ears as you stand up for what you want in life, but also as you realize and you know that by, by standing your ground and embracing your power, you do not need to, to change the mind of anybody else because, again, this, excuse me, this and that are true. They have the, their opinions. You have yours. Respect them, okay, but move on. And respect just means don't get into an argument. You know, don't sit there and say, oh, you have to see things my way. Because what you're doing here is as the angels are blessing you and as you're looking at the time that you have on this earthly plane and at what you want to develop, you are claiming your prosperity, you're claiming your bounty, and you're claiming your heart's desire, your emotional truth, your emotional understanding for what you want. And then we have the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, an Aquarius. This is mind and heart coming together most definitely for you because we are emotional beings and as emotional beings we have to see the way our heart impacts our minds because so many times we want to sit there and say oh I'm a logical being you know I can be just logic I can just look at the facts and maybe you know and those are people of the head but I still am of the firm belief that we as human beings we're all of the heart some of our hearts you know are much more showy than others okay we can be much more passionate than other people but here, letting your heart and listening to your heart and seeing how your heart is affecting your mind. Is your heart hurt? Is your heart broken? Is your heart overwhelmed? Okay, where are your, where is your, where are your emotions coming from? Where is your point of reference? Because here, the heart, love, is going to be so important to you. And it's going to affect your mind. Because the Queen of Swords, the Queen of Swords can get a bad rap because she is logic and understanding. She's the mind, okay? Intellect. And people can say the Queen of Swords is, you know, a cutting, straightforward type of person. But that would mean that all air sign energies were cutting, straightforward people. And that's not fair. It's like saying all water sign energies are just too emotional and can get pulled out by the undertow and just can be too much. And you might sit there and say, yeah, well, some of them can. And that's definitely true. And some of them can't. Just like, just like fire sign energies, they can say they're too fiery, they're too passionate, you know, they get caught up in the feelings and the desires of it all, and they'll lose track of all sense. So we don't want to go too in the extreme in the negative. So here with the Queen of Swords, know that there's going to be a time where you look at things and you have to be really logical with yourself. You're looking at things and it's like, okay, yes, you can wish it, you can hope it, you can work your kind of took us off in order to get there. You can really embrace your heart and your soul and what you want. But as you are developing yourself and we're always developing ourselves. Do not let the mind become overpowering. Do not let yourself sit there and say, it has to be like this. And let intellect come over because you need the intellect balanced with the heart and you will be unstoppable. It will bring forward because as you know your mind, okay? And this is you being behind the scenes. Queens for me are behind the scenes. Kings, actors, be actors upon the stage, queens, directors behind the scenes. So as you're looking at things, you're really cutting to the chase. You're like, no, what do I need? What are the bare bones of what I desire, what I want, what I need? You're going to see the passion develop. You're going to see yourself really calling on who you are, the essence of you, Aries. And this is going to be intertwined with your angels, your angels speaking to you, your angels guiding you, your angels telling you when to stand, kind of that song, you know when to hold them, you know when to fold them, you know when to walk away. You're going to see yourself knowing when to kind of hold the cards, you know, sit there and play it through, know when to fold and say, you know what, I got nothing and step aside or and know when to walk away and say, you know what, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. I need to focus on me or I need to focus on what I need. This is going to lead you to prosperity, most definitely. It's going to lead you to embracing your power, your truth, really stepping into your own. And it's going to bring you a place of love that is just shined on. You are going to feel like, wow, I get it. I understand it. I see it. 
And that is going to empower you. And I love that you have the King of Pentacles, right? And then you have 19 and 20. So you have the sun, you have your heart's wish really coming out. 20, the digression here, it's like the angels bless you and you step into the happiest card in the whole entire tarot deck. You step into your happiness. So as the Queen of Swords comes in, as you're looking at things, as you're cutting through doubts and fears, as you're speaking your mind, as you are embracing freedom, this is also going to be a time where you cannot be put into a box, Aries. You will not like it. You will sit there and you will be like, okay, fine. If I want to sit here and I choose to sit, that's great. But if you're telling me this is all I can do, you will find that you rebel against it. And that's going to be when you need to know how to balance the passion, okay? Because you might find that you get irritated or, you know, fiery with people during this time because of the seven of wands, where it's just kind of like, I know what I need. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. You know, what the heck are you doing standing in my way? And that's because they're not seeing the same vision that you are. And you're going with the seven of wands coming in. It's going to be easier to think of that person as kind of like an enemy, a person you need to defend yourself against, than a person who simply has a different opinion or a different, excuse me, or a different agenda altogether. And once you see this and once you cut through your doubts and your fears, you know your mind. I'm really seeing the necklace around her neck right here as being moonstones, you know, creativity and, and confidence really coming into play right here. A bit of the moon carried with you, guiding your words, this kind of cold, creative beauty, beauty coming in. This is going to open up the world to you. You're going to see things in new ways. Doors that you had thought were closed start to open. Passions that you thought you had to hide because, okay, you know, you couldn't let yourself be too involved in something or you couldn't give your heart so fully. You're going to sit there and be like, no, I definitely can. And you embrace it. You understand it. And the world starts opening up to you. There's a sense of empowerment. There's a sense of truth. There's a sense of dignity and pride and ferocity of spirit. And as the world opens up, there's going to be those doubts that come in. There's going to be that, that sense of, oh my gosh, I can't. I can't move forward this way. I don't know how. I'm going to mess it up. I've messed it up before. And the fear is also going to come because you can see your prosperity coming. There's something about, about you that you're feeling like, wow, there's, there's more. There's more beauty. There's more power. There's more truth. There's, there's more coming. And you're going to claim it. You're going to live it. But at first, you're going to fear it. So just be mindful of that, that there is going to be some self-sabotaging. Even if you say, oh, Dane, that's ridiculous. You know, I've always wanted to be successful. I always want to be successful in A or B, you know, and I'm going to do nothing that would jeopardize that. Just know that I'm seeing here that as doors start to open, as you start to look at new horizons, new ideas, there comes a time where there is a bit of self-sabotaging. And it could be simply procrastination. It could be, you know, doubts and fears or not sleeping, not taking care of yourself, things like that can all add up to lead to exhaustion to keep you stagnant. So just be mindful of that. That's what your angels are saying to, to be mindful of because as you embrace your prosperity, as you plant your seeds into the earth, as your passion warms them, as your emotions waters them, you're going to see yourself really start opening up to prosperity and to the bounty that you want. But you need that passion. You need that emotional connection. And you need that power of the mind, the wind, to rustle through the branches of the tree that grows to bring down the rain and, and to move you forward. Your subconscious message for this whole entire reading is the Hierophant, okay? This is the guide in this tarot deck. The Hierophant is a Taurus energy, time frame April 20th to May 20th. Now, this is an earth sign energy, so you can have a very strong connection with a Taurus during this time, but there's a sense of deeper understanding coming, seeing the greater mysteries of things, understanding your truth, moving forward in your power, looking at what you desire and what you need, and being true to yourself. You're going to see that this is a time to be true to yourself and also to speak what you would normally have ignored. It's kind of like, oh, I, I won't be like that because it might be, you know, people might laugh. Or something to that effect and now you're saying no this is me and why should I be ashamed don't don't be ashamed your subconscious message for your your chakra cards is rebirth now this is the earth star chakra this is located six inches below your feet this is about vitality rejuvenation this is your animal spirit guides really coming forward and this is a sense of planting of roots and of being reborn learning and seeing how to fly higher than you have imagined and then your subconscious spirit animal card is the sea horse. Wait and watch. Don't be so quick to act during this time, okay? Wait, watch, see, take things in, and then go. 
Yes, you might sit there and say, okay, that's a bit cunning, a bit manipulative if you want to, but it's not going to be. It's going to be smart, it's going to be wise, it's going to be determined, and it's really going to serve you well. All right, Aries. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you, and I love you all. Bye.